So welcome to Russell Designs guys and in today's video we'll be covering the issues and the highs and lows that I've had with my Creality K1 Max 3D printer. But before we start that video, we're going to have a word from our sponsors which is WrestleDesigns.com. Guys, it's my website, check it out. I've got bits for sale, bits that I find in the scrapyards, bits I've got laying around the workshop. It first started off with loads of stuff that I had in the workshop. That was kind of because I shrunk down my workshop and I had loads of stuff laying around. I just wanted to clear up and I've sold loads of bits. So thank you very much guys to the guys that have been buying from the website. I much appreciate your trust and hopefully I've returned that with items at a fairly good price and a good service. Now, some more bits are going up on the website today. Some of it is actually to do with today's video, which is 3D printing. Hopefully you can just see it here, as well as some other stuff I found and going around the scrapyards. Now, I can't believe I've actually found another original Mark II loom. The one I had last week, that literally went within about two days, and that was an original Mark II electric window loom that came off a Jetta, actually, a GTD Jetta, a white one. And this week, I went to another scrapyard and I found a Jetta there as well. Another, it wasn't a GTD, I think it was just a, a 1.6D, and, um, and it had electric loom, and it isn't cut up. So yep, yeah, I've got an original Mark II electric window loom going up on there at the same price as the other one that sold literally at 62 pounds. This one, let's see how, that one, how long that lasts on the website, but that's gonna go up there this evening. Also, for some reason I seem to have three of these sets of these Mark II rear axle, rear beam bushes. Um, I use them on my project cars as well as the few odd customers cars and maybe I've bought more than I actually needed. And I've got three of them in stock actually, three sets of these. Now, basically, the reason why I go for these is they're polyurethane. They're not too noisy or squeaky like some of them are. And also they're matte black, so they look really original. They don't stand out. And it's a nice upgrade over the original. I've got them on my Project 3B. I put them on a few project cars. Everyone's happy with them. They don't squeak as well, which is really quite nice. I don't know why they don't squeak. Maybe it's the polyurethane or the mixture that they've made out of. But uh, yeah, I can't remember even where I've got these from. But uh, I know I've got three sets in stock. So these are gonna go up on the website. I don't need that many. Um, yep, yeah, so grab yourselves a bargain with those on there. Now, pollen filter housing for your Mark II Golf. Now guys, don't be this guy. Um, yeah, be careful of where you buy them, what they're made out of, and what they actually really are made out of. I was told this was good a deal with what I needed it to do, and I had loads of these printed up, and quite obviously, it didn't work. So I've taken things into my own hands, got my own 3D printer, which is what this video is going to be about, and uh, one of my first products going to go on the website is actually going to be my very own 3D printed housing you can see there's a slight difference there's an improvement or i feel aesthetically the way it looks definitely is a lot nicer the print quality is a lot better the infill uh, and the material most importantly is about three times if not four times more expensive than pla it's gonna not warp under temperatures under your engine bay it's more robust it's not gonna discolor this stuff is really quite good but it is expensive material so on these when you do buy them on the website um, I will make them to order. So basically, when you click the button, I'll make them. On the printer, they take about four hours, four to five hours to make. So, yep, as soon as you click the button to buy, I will print and then ship. So, yep, all around the world. All right, guys, so that is that. Now, this one actually holding in my hand is a test because this is slightly different to what's going to be available on the website. This will be on the web, available on the website hopefully in the next few weeks. If I can get someone to test this. Now, as you can see, they're a mirror image of each other, almost. Now, the reason for that is, this is what's gonna go on the website. This is for left-hand drive cars only. So, for the rest of the world that drives, or half of the world that drives left-hand drive, this is the pollen filter housing for you. This is for right-hand drive cars, UK, Australia, New Zealand, most parts of Asia. Yeah, this is the one for you guys. This is going to be a right, <coughs> sorry, this is going to be a right hand drive one, uh, but I need someone to test it. So, yep, hit me up. I'm going to make maybe two tests. I want to kind of ship them out. It won't cost you anything to test this. Uh, free shipping, uh, you don't have to pay for the item. All you need to do is actually uh, spend five minutes of your time test fitting it, give me some feedback, send me some photos. And uh, yeah, and once that's done, I can actually put this in production. So I'm hoping in the next few weeks, uh, once this video goes out, 
I can get someone to test my right hand drive pollen filter housing. Enough of me waffling about the sponsor, let's get back in today's video and to the 3D printer. So welcome guys to another a dummy with a 3D printer making car parts. Now, if you saw my other 3D video about the reality and the issues that I've had with the K1 Max, um, it's mainly because, or could be because, I'm a total newbie to dealing with 3D printers and I'm also a bit of a techophobe or technophobe is probably the right word for it. And uh, I must admit this has been a journey of a baptism of fire actually the last two or three weeks with this. Um, I went from using just the standard filament that came with, with the 3D printer, which was PLA, and it all went quite smooth actually. I made some cool shapes and actually to start off with, I found a few websites, the links will be in the description, where you could actually download files. And I thought, let me just kind of download those and see what happens. And I had a few issues with, long story short, I basically had problems with it feeding through and I still do have problems with it. I've kind of left it as it is. Let me just quickly show you guys. Because it running it through that little hole just doesn't seem to work. The angle seems to be quite tight uh, as well as it's got sharp edges on there. I was going to make a hole. A few people in the comments said to me, please don't make a hole in your brand new printer. So I basically just left it like this for the time being until I look up for some kind of better or somebody comes up with a better idea or a better version or better fix, should I say. Uh, also, it seemed to struggle to go through the actual sensor. So all I did is just literally just like a bit of filament in there to kind of fool the sensor that it's still got filament in it. Um, but apart from that, it's worked fine when I was using, like I said, the PLA and I made a few designs. I downloaded a few on the website. When it came to using this other filament, which is kind of a variant on ASA, um, mainly why I got the cabinet anyways, because it, to keep the heat in there, I had a few issues. I've noticed it isn't as flexible. It doesn't do the overhangs as well. So I've actually got to try another filament, which is PLA, I think Inferno or something, um, which, yep, I think should be hopefully as flexible as deals with the overhangs nicely and easily as this PLA does, but it's got a lot more heat resistance than just 70 degrees because in the end, these are car parts and some of them are going to be living in a hot environment. Now, so these are hot off the press. These are the first things I've actually made myself and not downloaded, which is four rings, right? Now, a bit of a nightmare that I've had with a set of wheels that I've got here, which are these quite rare nowadays, these Hockenheim, TSW Hockenheims. They're actually Hockenheim R's. Quite nice, eight by 17. And this Brigitte ring, because it's obviously a new universal wheel, 4x100, so it'll fit a Renault, it'll fit, you know, um, an Opel, a Corsa, a Vauxhall, uh, a VW, a Mazda, whatever, Renault, which is a 4x100, and they leave this bit bigger, and you need a Sprigget ring to go in. I'm sure you guys know what this is. I don't need to go into depth with this, but I, it's, as you can see, it's quite shallow. It's literally only about seven and a half mil. And I could not find any wheel shop doing this. Uh, I even tried to contact TSW themselves. They sent me a link to a store. They also didn't do anything. So in the end, with my 3D printer, I was able to print up a perfect size. It took me a while, but I actually got it there. Absolutely perfect. So now I've actually made myself a perfect spring ring to fit the VW. So that was basically my first thing that a dummy has made with uh, his 3D printer. No. And like I've said, I'm a bit of a tech phobe and uh, I'm surprised I've made everything on this table apart from that. Now over the, the past, so from the last video to this video, it's been about maybe about two, three weeks and I've been hardcore watching YouTube tutorials, figuring out, playing around with the software that I, I got, that I found, uh, and I've managed to make some of the stuff that you see here in front of you. Now, obviously this is mainly towards the VW guys, and some of this stuff, actually I do have a website, which is wrestledesigns.com, where some of these products are actually gonna go on there. So I don't know what's gonna be in the thumbnail, if it's gonna be these 3D printed pollen filter bits, or 
whatever it is a variation but hopefully you've come to the video because you want to see car parts being made with a 3d printer and they can be done and it's the future really and more and more people are doing it with especially with these filaments that are coming out now stuff is definitely the way forward i think it's definitely really sorted me out on a few issues i've made some brake line bits and bobs but i'm i'm waffling and uh yep i've made these shapes these quite organic looking shapes very easily on on i think it was on shape um and it works really really well and uh, like i said so this is like a, a mark ii golf stuff which is an air box this comes with a really small intake like this which is really restrictive i mean it's mainly there for sound uh, they are different variants kind of like the gti i think it's slightly bigger the 65 is bigger again the g60 is bigger again but none of them are actually this large uh be quite restrictive i mean you can take it off but then it just leaves you with that which you get a lot of air buffering so if this organic shape on here you're going to get a lot more easier transition i don't know if you're going to see any power increases you might do definitely gives your standard air box a bit more kind of headroom for uh not dropping in horsepower i don't know if you could be gaining but you know whereas you know if you just put this on a standard car you probably wouldn't see anything but if you were pushing the air box to its limits this would probably give you a bit more of a higher ceiling if that makes sense uh, and this is also for Sayat because there's a lot of guys out there with 6Ks, uh, Sayat 6K, um, TDIs and GTIs as well as 16 bar of ABF stuff. Again, comes with a really small restrictor and this kind of fits there and it gives you a lot more of a nice organic shape that kind of goes in there. Basically these bits, you would just kind of just glue them and bond them on and that's it, they become part of the airbox. They shouldn't be issued. This is again in PLA, this was just test fits, but they will be made with the SS, with their ASA stuff, kind of variant stuff that I've got there, which is got a bit of carbon in it as well. So it's very resistant to, to knocking as well as to, to heat resistance, which is this stuff here. I've got a project car that I'm doing, which is a Smart One Golf Cabrio. And uh, it's got a two liter in it, a two E. So that runs actually an old style Bosch air math meter. And uh, yep, yeah, and I couldn't find an adapter for him to fit a K in on or a cone filter on because he's got, um, again, very limited space, you can't even fit one of these air boxes in it. So I've literally quick this, I've surprised myself actually how quick I've got to hold or to grips with this program, the Onshape program. I would highly recommend using that if you're new to this kind of stuff. It's really quite flexible and there's loads of videos on YouTube as well, which, you know, sometimes you can watch tutorials, but they can be a bit boring. It's, you're better off almost, I found getting hands on, finding a problem and then just specifically looking for that problem and you kind of seem to, or I've found to learn and use it a lot quicker that way. Kind of get in, find where you're stuck and then just researching and watching videos on that little bit until you find the next bit you're stuck on. Or the next thing that you want to kind of do planes, this, that and the other, planes at different angles, whatever it may be, ribbing and stuff. And you just kind of, yeah, just watch the bits that you get stuck on and then you can move forward again. Whereas watching a whole tutorial can be a bit more morphic. So I've made that and these are pollen filters now. I've had a lot of requests for these and I originally had these made up um, for me by somebody else which was printing them. Now, I don't know if you're watching the video, you can see how rough that is under there. And I had a few of these made and yep, and I put one on my vehicle and I'll show you in a minute what happened to it. Now this is one that I've made with my own machine and also I've got control over the products as you can see in the shape. So I've literally had this and I've just copied this by myself it maybe took me an hour or so to do this as you can see this is just you know 90 degree angles and stuff and just a bit rough around the top and everything else and this stuff is just look at the finish on this it's just a lot nicer the finish rounded off curves as well as it's much more resistant to what this is because in the end I asked for something that was going to be you know for motor vehicle they said yeah yeah the material they got is fine and in the end I just think this is black PLA and I'll show you why I think that is so this is why I've kind of got more control over now the products that I use the quality of the print and everything else so let's go over to my project freebie and I'll show you guys why I've moved away from that and why there was a pause in production of these to what's going to be coming out this week so this is a pollen filter which is on a left hand drive car and as you can see why i stopped production of these hopefully you can see what it's done it's actually deformed and warped with the heat 
I mean, here in Portugal, it can get crazy hot. And then you've got underbonnet temperatures, even though this is on the other side of the firewall with the cover. Obviously, it reached more than 70 odd degrees and it's warped the box, as you can see. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove that and we're going to fit my own product. Basically, this is pretty easy. Just got like a little clip here on the side. You see that fits perfectly. Now we're going to go back into the workshop and I'm going to show you how to actually fit this. It's basically like a look, just slides in. There's a little clip here. You should have on your original one. It literally just goes into place, locks it in there, slides in there. Now, all you get is just this, the pollen filter. I will give you the part number for the pollen filter that you need, as well as you will need to remove off your original kind of plastic net. At the moment, for the first, for the first set, for the first run, uh, you'll have to kind of peel off your one of these off your plastic net and stick it onto the bottom, otherwise you're gonna get a bit of play. So this kind of goes underneath. So I'll show you guys what you need to do. maybe the original adhesive might actually still work to some degree yeah it has but yeah you might want to put some extra spray glue or something on there and that's it and literally then just like I said slide it in on those two little clips it goes there like that there and you need to just put the you need two hands for this probably There you go, hopefully you heard that, the clips in. And the filter literally just slides into the back, the little hooks at the back. And look at that, perfect fit, absolutely perfect. All right, let's go in, I'll show you how badly damaged this is. So back here in the workshop, you can see the difference of the one that I got made for me. And once it was fitted, look at that, it's actually kind of warped in every single plane it's walked kind of outwards there there and there inwards at the back upwards at the bottom yeah so that is good for one place one place only so yeah the new item which is actually in the car you saw me just fitting it it's going to be proudly up for sale this week guys so these are going to be on a special offer from now till christmas uh, in the new year they will go up to the, what will be the original price also before the end of the year. So, you know, watch this space. There's actually going to be a UK one. Uh, there might even be a UK one up. This, oh no, there can't be a UK one up because I need to test it first on a UK car. There's actually a few people I'm going to be sending this to in the UK, my UK version. They're going to test fit it for me and they've had no issues with it actually fitting in the car and sent photos. I will then put that for sale. So that will be, I know there's a few people bugging me on my socials um yes hang tight like i said before the end of the year there will be a uk right hand drive pollen filter adapter bracket mount whatever you want to call it ready for all my uk viewers and cars guys so yeah this is how i've got on so far with my curality k1 max doing car parts i mean like i said i've had no idea with doing these drawings and stuff and i've quickly you know used on shape watched youtube tutorial tutorials i've watched stuff on youtube to help me out guys if i can do it anyone can do this guys thanks for watching please subscribe like the videos if you like this mark 2 content mark 1 occasionally but yet loads of content on the channel subscribe like be safe guys